Mic check, one, two. Hello, hello. How's it going, guys? Uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday. What's going on? Welcome to uh, hashtag TNT Joe Fi. Uh, that stands for tech news that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. I am your host, Jerome Ortega. If you see these earbuds here, uh, I have them on because uh, I have a guest later today. Uh, Grant will be joining us. If you're not familiar uh, with who Grant is, he is also a tech YouTuber. Um, He's, uh, I've known him for quite a bit. And actually, we have never really spoken face to face just through, uh, you know, DMs here and there. Not not much. And then just Twitter. But we'll, we'll get into that. And it'll, it'll actually be the first time we're going to talk face to face today because we didn't even do any kind of pre kind of show thing. But uh, he's, uh, he, he does a lot of camera stuff. And, um, you know, I'm going to pick his brain today. So uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little later. But uh, I do want to say hi to everybody. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Happy Friday. This is um, day number something something in quarantine because I lost count. And this is also uh, episode number something something because I lost count. But, uh, you know, we have a good amount of news, but I'm only going to probably do three or four stories. It's actually not that much news. I don't know what I'm talking about. And then I want to have a conversation with Grant. But, um, you know, I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, DB Cooper was first in here. Uh, yo, what up? What up, DB Cooper? How's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Happy Friday. Nice to see you. Yeah, Brian is in here as well. Brian, what's going on? TNT Joe TGIF edition. Exactly, exactly. Um, what's going on, Brian? Nice to have you, man. Paul Hendricks is in here as well. Hi. Hi, Paul. What's up, man? How you doing? Um, Let's see here. Uh, for the first time since February, went to a concert yesterday. How was that? I uh, actually I have a article about how Apple's closing a couple more retail stores again here in the U.S. I think we actually just hit a new high for coronavirus cases yesterday. I think over one hundred and fifty thousand. I don't know. It's crazy, man. There's just so much going on. So I don't know. Uh, oh, I see super chats in here. Levin with the two dollars super chat. Uh, what's up, stream? Uh, what up, Levin? Thank you for the support, man. Thank you for that continued support. Uh, you're you're on a roll, man. Um, how's it going? Happy Friday. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. And then Grant, uh, who will be joining the show with the five dollars super chat. 
Uh, I told Grant that he can come on the show only if he super chats me today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not the case. <laughs> Excited to join the show today. Let's get the super chats going. Thank you, Grant. Thank you for the support. Uh, Levin, thank you as well. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Um, Paul saying, hence my non-attendance. I gotcha. Um, what did you, what kind of concert was it, man? Uh, hopefully it was good. Um, Okay, let's see here. Uh, 30 people in a large venue. Oh, wow. I can only imagine how that is. Uh, crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know how a lot of that stuff is going to come back. Uh, Team Varai is in here as well. Hi, everyone. Happy Friday, Team Varai. Happy Friday, man. Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right. So let's, uh, let's get started because, again, uh, Grant will be joining us a little bit later. And uh, like I said, I want to pick his brain. So uh, the, the first main news that I have today is it looks like there was a leak for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. And they're talking about, you know, purported specs, Snapdragon 865 plus 120 hertz display. But that shouldn't be surprising. Actually, I also feel a lot better today. Hopefully, like my sinuses are good um, or better. <laughs> because uh, yesterday was awful. So this article from Android Central says the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra will apparently look more like the Note 10 Plus than the S20 Ultra. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't really, I haven't had a Samsung since the S9. So I'm not so familiar lately when it comes to form factor and sizes and the feel of it. But if you had to pick between the Note 10 Plus form factor and the S20 Ultra form factor, would you, do you have a preference? Anyway, we'll get into it. So what you need to know, Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra could be powered by a Snap 865 Plus chipset in select markets. The phone is also tipped to feature a Quad HD Plus 120 Hertz LTPO display with thinner bezels than the Note 10 Plus. Uh, the one thing that I wasn't aware about was an LTPO display. I really was not familiar with it. So I ended up Googling it like I normally do when I need answers. <laughs> so this article from PC World is talking about what an LTPO display is. And apparently this display has already been put in on, I, I guess the Apple Watch Series 4 and Series 5. So an LTPO display is a low temperature polycrystalline oxide display uh, a special kind of backplane technology designed for OLED screens and developed by Apple. Uh, it was introduced uh, with the Series 4 Apple Watch and is a critical part of how the new Apple Watch Series 5 is able to offer an always-on display experience without completely killing the battery life. And just really quick, because I'm not going to get into the whole meat and potatoes of it, but why are they? Why why are LTPO displays good? In the case of the Series 5 Apple Watch, having an LTPO display is good because it lets Apple dynamically change the refresh rate on the wearable screen. If you're looking at uh, an inter, what? <laughs> if you're looking at interacting with it, they crank it up. If it's idle, they only really need to refresh it once a minute or so. The end result of this tinkering is an Apple Watch that's always on but doesn't always eat away at uh, your battery life, which. I mean, that seems good, at least in those you know terms. But is this something that is going to apply the same way for the Note uh, 20 Ultra? I, I don't know. Maybe they'll get more into that when this phone starts getting revealed. You know, when uh, Samsung officially says something, because I don't know then how it applies to something like a phone, especially when you don't have it on all the time. Yeah, I don't know, just thinking out loud here. So uh, the Galaxy Note 20 series may debut at its first online unpacked event on August 5th. So earlier this week, uh, earlier this week, Tipster Ice Universe claimed that the vanilla Galaxy Note 20 will come with a full HD plus display featuring a 60 Hertz refresh rate. The Tipster has now shared some, some specs of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which is expected to debut alongside the Note 20 on August 5th. So Evolution version Note 10 Plus, Snap 865 Plus, Quad HD Plus, 120 Hertz can be turned on at the same time. An LTPO display, new camera function, new S Pen, and features. I've said this before. I don't. Um, I don't. I've never. I've actually never owned a Note series phone. Uh, I still don't know what I would use an S Pen for, or a stylus, for that matter, on a phone. Maybe it has 
functional uses. If I had to actually jot notes down, I could see that. But I don't know. I guess at this point, I'm still not finding um, you know, a specific use for it. According to Ice Universe, the Note 20 Ultra will feature a Snap 865 Plus chipset in select markets, so not everywhere. However, the existence of the Snap 865 Plus chipset hasn't been confirmed yet. So it's not even a thing. We don't even know if it's a, a concrete leak. In fact, Maizu CMO Wan Ji Zhang, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, <laughs> pronouncing that right, had claimed in April this year that there isn't going to be a Snap 865 Plus this year. If the Snap 865 Plus does exist, it will likely offer slightly better benchmark performance compared to the Snap 865. It also just leads me to think how much a phone like this is going to cost. Uh, if the Galaxy S20 Ultra was what, pricing at four, 1400 <laughs> had a, a a lapsing moment there right 1400 what is is this going to be 1500 because right the note the note series typically is a little bit higher in price than what the s series is right i think i don't know it's it's hard to keep up with these uh very expensive phones so um the Note 20 Ultra will allow users to enable 120 hertz at Quad HD plus resolution. The phone's display is also said to have steeper curves on the edges, similar to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. While the rest of the phone's specs haven't surfaced yet, the tipster suggests it'll offer a few new camera features, hopefully fixed camera features as well, as well as an improved S Pen. So this is the actual tweet from Ice Universe. I just wanted to show it since there are a couple other pictures here. And obviously this is not the S20 Ultra yet. If anything, it looks like it's a dummy device. Uh, if it, I, I'm guessing it's to show how big, you know, the display is or like how it looks for, you know, the upcoming, uh, note series and then there's a, a video here as well i don't know if there's sound i'm going to turn that off kind of just giving you an idea of what it looks like i mean it's nice i you know i see that curved display don't know how that would uh you know work in just everyday usage but uh we'll see so i don't have to really go through it because it's not a real real device here. But yeah, that's that's about it. So, uh let me let me get into chat. We can kind of talk about it and see uh, you know, what you guys think of it. I see Brian here also with the dollar super chat. Brian, thank you so much, man. Thank you for that continued support, Brian, on his streak of super chats. Brian, thank you again, man. Uh thank you for also being a moderator and uh taking care of business in the chat. Um always nice to always nice to have that extra support, man. So, thank you so much. Okay, uh let's let's go ahead and um read chat team Vry says to be honest i felt we've hit peak smartphone with the note 9 and all we're getting these days are minor improvements even losing some like the three and a half millimeter headphone jack i completely agree team Vry. um it's hard to kind of get excited about phones and maybe that's why <laughs> i i tweeted um yesterday grant actually on my discord sent a link to an eBay auction for a Huawei P40 Pro Plus and was like, here, Jerome, you know, it was like 1600 bucks. And it's it's funny, like that's what's exciting me now is a $1,600 phone only because really, I just wanna see how good a camera is on a phone. That's that's what excites me lately for a phone. Not, not, not the price, not at all the price. Um, I do get excited about cheaper prices and better values, and that's something I'll always push for. But uh, yeah, I, I agree, Team Vari. It's it's hard to kind of find something that um, to even really get excited about in a way. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but uh, I, I feel like, especially when phone tech first started or just phones in general, you know, that curve was really high in terms of like, you know, evolution of a smartphone and what you could do with it and uh, we're, we're at a point now where we've we've hit kind of that peak unless something really changes yeah foldable phones what um stretchable displays but that still isn't you know it still is it's still it's not mature yet and that's still technology that we're testing out so yeah i i agree though um brian says some fancy ass display that has variable refresh rate uh yep 
No, exactly. Uh, Paul says uh, it was Brahms and Wagner explained an orchestra. 35 people uh, played a piece. Then a DJ stopped it and explained what part to pay attention. A very nice way to chew through classical music. That sounds cool. I, um, I've been to a, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Deltron 3030, but they were here in Chicago and uh, it was a great set because it was him and uh, Dan the Automator and uh, they had a whole orchestra that while, you know, uh, Dell did his thing. I don't know. It was, it was, it was awesome. It was great. Um, <laughs> which is quite hard to stomach in my opinion. Brian says, seems like this year was focusing on telephoto on cameras. I see that as well. Uh, telephoto refresh rates. I don't know, just a couple of things that aren't really, they're not that exciting to me. Uh, but that P40 Pro Plus apparently has like an amazing telephoto camera. So again, uh, I might pull that 1600 bucks. <laughs> we'll see. DG Tech Life is uh, in the stream. Uh, hey guys, what's the price? On that Note 20 Ultra, your guess is as good as mine, man. Um, I wonder, I wonder what that would price at. I, I would imagine if the Note 20, if the uh, S20 Ultra is 1400 bucks, I would guess 1500, right? 1499 or something like that. I, that's my assumption. I don't, I don't know unless Samsung decides that, you know, they're going to drastically uh, do a 180 and start lowering prices on their phones. But I guess you never know, you, you know, uh, or They'll always have a deal. You know, you buy this phone and then you'll get like $400 worth of Samsung stuff. They'll give you a free, uh, the new, uh, what is it? Active three smartwatch or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, VG tech life. Uh, thank you for uh, joining the stream. Appreciate you, uh, coming into the chat. Um, Brian says here, and none of us really shoot like that all that much. Yep. Uh, so it's going to be a mortgage payment. Yeah, that's true. Uh, or a really fancy apartment. Levin says phones are getting high in price, but no new features. And, and that's, that's really, uh, what I've been seeing too. And, and so it's also kind of why I've been pushing for just waiting a year, getting a better deal on a phone. And this is something that Mike simply your device, uh, has, or Joker tech now, <laughs> whenever Mike wants to, Mike, I know you're probably listening. Maybe you are but uh, you let me know what your real name is now. Cause uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah. High prices. A lot of the stuff seems pretty similar for most people. They won't even notice if you give them a, a year old phone. I mean, we talked about this yesterday with the one plus seven pro it still holds up today in, in a lot of respects, maybe not the camera so much, but in, in most other respects, it's still um, pretty up there. So, Continuing on, uh, just real quick, because I know Grant will probably be on in a little bit here. Uh, so if you guys are in the stream, yes, I have uh, Grant will be uh, joining the stream in a little bit. We'll, we'll have a conversation. We'll talk about a couple of things. But I do want to point out that if you are in here, uh, please uh, hit that like button uh, for the stream. Uh, liking the stream, at least how I think helps algorithmically, that is... I hope it helps people find the stream, helps people like come in here, engage in the chat. And it's just, you know, it's a way to kind of like help and support. And at the same time, I will also say that, uh, you know, I stream weekdays, Mondays through Fridays at the same time every day, 2 p.m. Central. So if you guys haven't already, please consider to uh, be a, I'm, I'm really messing up my, uh, my thing today. Please consider being a subscriber. Um, yeah, I stream, uh, I stream weekdays and you can get notified by doing that. And uh, real quick, just before I move on, if you guys are looking at people in the chat and you see people with green in, in the chat, green names or a red Chicago star, that is because they are part of the phone Jerome fam. And you could be one too for as little as 99 cents a month. All you got to do is click that join button. You'll get that uh, green in your name. You'll get the red Chicago uh, badge star badge and you'll get to use custom emoji you'll also get your name on the intros and outros of every single one of my live streams there are different tiers as well but i won't get into that right now anyway all you got to do is click that join button and if you can't find that you can go to youtube.com forward slash phone jerome forward slash join either way it's just a good way to uh, support if you'd like if you want to um you know take that extra stuff otherwise you know, I appreciate you guys just coming by and uh, hitting that like button and, and, you know, engaging with the community. So uh, anyway, with that being said, I um, wrong screen. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm really messing up today. <laughs> With that being said, I, I see Grant is in here. So Grant, I am going to throw uh, him on. Um, Grant, what's going on? How you doing? What's up, Jerome? How's it going, man? Uh-oh. There, there we go. There's the audio. You're good. You're good. Uh, I'm we good. Grant. All right. Yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's really... <laughs> It's weird because I've known you for quite some time, or at least we've known of each other. And like, you know, we'll talk here and there, but it's the first time I've actually um, had a chance to talk with you. So um, I, how you doing? <laughs> <How's> it <going? laughs> it's all good, man. Yeah. I see uh, you're mastering the whole live stream thing. I'm, I'm trying. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a whole different animal. It, it's, it's a lot easier to produce. You know, I'm not I'm not sitting in the editing booth for like 12 hours on a camera comparison, but uh, I think I have to find a good balance in between the two. But uh, so actually, since uh, since we just talked about um, the Note 20 Ultra, have you have you owned any Note series phones? Are you um, I don't I don't know what your lineup. So like for people who don't know, Grant has owned a slew of phones every time I'm either on Instagram or on Twitter. It always seems like Grant has another phone <laughs> that, that he's gotten and he's either testing the camera out. But um, so for the Note series, have you have you owned any, any Note phones in the past? Yeah, I've had pretty much every Note, I think, since the Note 2. Oh, my well, God. Actually, I, I did have the first one. I had every Note except the Note 2. Wow. Holy yeah. cow. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on this Note 20 Ultra? I don't know. I, I honestly, I haven't looked into much of the, the leaks and the rumor stuff. Like mm -hmm. I try not to pay attention to that. It's inevitable, but you know, not really paying too much attention to be honest, but really with the note, even with the probably the last couple of iterations of the note, right? It's even this 20, it's pretty much just, you know, like everyone says, isn't it? Like, it's like the S plus or S ultra with yeah. a pen, right? And that's pretty much what they're doing now. Uh, they just kind of distinguish it by, you know, different corners, maybe more rigid corners, a little bit flatter display, but otherwise, you know, it's not as much a different shade like they used to, right? And so mm -hmm. I know everyone says that, but it's pretty much true, right? They used to pretty much throw all the coolest stuff in the note. And, you know, the S line was always just kind of that step down. It was good enough for, you know, most people, but it wasn't like on the bleeding edge. And now they're kind of throwing a lot into the S series and, you know, there's not much left over for the note. Yeah, Although they're and, gonna have to fix that camera. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's very true. And and that kind of like actually, that's that's what it leads me to to say is like, what what is what is the big differentiator at this point then with the S twenty Ultra and the Note twenty Ultra, except the S Pen? Um, I mean, yeah, and then I guess advancements or improvements uh, when it comes to, uh, I don't know, the camera, maybe a little bit in the display, but um, but yeah. I, so, so I guess, let me ask you then. So for the S 20 series, I, I, I can't keep up grant. And like, I, I have a hard time keeping up with a lot of like people <laughs> anyway, but do you have the S 20 or have you had it or I had the baby S 20, the regular and small one. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, what made you pick that one over the plus or the ultra, or was it just a money decision there? I wasn't going to get any of them, honestly, and I tried to stay strong, but then I got a pretty <laughs> good deal locally on the S20, uh -huh. uh, so I picked that one up. Um, I want I wouldn't have minded the Plus, but you know it's pretty much the same as the Plus. So like, I think the Plus just has that time of flight camera, but pretty much the camera yeah. system on the regular and the Plus are the same. Uh, I didn't want to chance it on the Ultra that early. Yeah, uh, wow, well, it's a good so thing you did I, it. I mean, I just got a deal on the 20, so I took it and... That's just good. try to play around with a little bit. So, yeah. so do you do you have it now still or no? Yeah, I've still got it. Um, I might pass it down to my sister or something. She she likes uh, the Galaxy S line, so she's oh. on a S eight, I think, right now. So okay, okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Let me um, let me kind of let me kind of like scale back here and kind of like learn about who Grant is. So I don't know. Um, should I lay down on the couch? Back there? <laughs> no, it's not that kind of conversation. <laughs> but but I what I want to kind of get uh, at is like maybe the beginnings of like where you were when it came to to phones. And so, um, when you when you first really started to get into tech, was it just because of phones, or have you were you into just like other aspects of tech before it started getting into this into like the whole mobile part of it? Yeah, I mean, tech is kind of broad, but I've always been interested in like electronics. Mm -hmm. So like pretty much ever since I was a kid, it was like, you know, I'm going to date myself. 
but you know, it was, <laughs> I hear, it's like me, I'm the same way. You know, I was pretty, I was pretty happy when I got my first CD player, but I, you know, cassette tapes are cool and yeah. all that, but I got my first, first personal stereo and CD player when I was in high school. So I just kind of dated myself there, but um, you know, <laughs> electronics has always been cool to me. It evolved into obviously the desktops and all that stuff. I used to build a lot of desktops. Yeah. Um, in the early two thousands, probably before it was really cool. And then I, um, that's I, that's when and I, then I got old building. and tired and I didn't want to tinker anymore. And <laughs> the whole mobile thing happened. And so, <laughs> yeah. But, so, okay. So then, uh, did you have an iPhone first or an Android first? I had before iPhone or Android existed. Uh huh. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'm my, the same way. My first, yeah. My first cell phone was pretty much like the one I personally owned with my own plan was kind of the old Nokia candy bar bricks. Yeah, um, that's, I was you know, the same way too. Yeah. One of those. And then um, I got the HTC Windows mobile phone, not Windows phone. This is before it's Windows phone. Yeah. It was right. Windows mobile. I got the one that HTC made for that. I think wow. it was like a white label audio vox that HTC made. I never had that one. And so, the one I really liked was the uh, Nokia N95. That's the one that had the slide out. Uh, I had that one. I had, I had that one as well. That was cool I, because... That was the first phone that could actually do live streaming. They had live streaming service. That was like right around Justin TV time and all that stuff. Yeah, the that's company right. called Quick, who did the first kind of live streaming service. And the N95 was the first phone that supported that service. So oh, it was the first phone that could do live streaming. That's so interesting. I actually, I, I had no idea. I had no idea. So, okay, well, let me let me move on then. When So before, okay, so after all of that, the candy bar, you know, saga and like all that kind of stuff. What was it Android first or was it iOS first? iPhone. I had it iPhone. Was. I got the very first iPhone in 2007. Do you still have it or no? Oh yeah, I still have it. I got a, actually, <laughs> I got the 3GS. If I don't bring down the whole shelf, but I got the 3GS. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, the same yeah. Form factor as original iPhone, right? So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So what is, uh, what is your, what is your daily right now? What are you using? Mm, there's no real daily. I, I swap them out so much, but I always have an iPhone and at least one or two Androids that I'm testing. So, okay. But I'll always have I'll always have an iPhone. So right now I've got the 11 Pro Max. Yeah. Um, and then I'm playing around with the LG V60. Uh, TCL sent out that 11 or TCL 10 Pro. Yep. Yep. So I still gotta I still gotta do some videos on that. Um, but yeah, I got, I got a bunch of phones lying around. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I, and that's why. That's why. Like, I'm just like every time I, I, you know, scroll through your social media feeds, I'm just like, God, Grant has every phone that's coming out. <laughs> um, that's awesome, though. That's great. So, uh, if okay, if if I were to ask you when it comes to like, um, uh, I, I guess I guess I'm just trying to think here. So, when it comes to Android phones, do you have a favorite? Is there, is there like, you know how I am, you, you, you know, I wear, uh, my bias on my sleeve and I'm just a stock Android guy. And I'm always been a, I've been a pixel guy for a long time, yeah. but, uh, for you, do you have a favorite or does that change or just, does it depend on what's out right now? I guess if I could only carry one Android, mm -hmm. I'll definitely be pixel. It would be pixel. Yeah, definitely okay. pixel. I mean, I'm a camera guy and I'm a stock Android guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm one of the few. I think I'm with you. Okay. Uh, I, I'll take stock Android over Oxygen OS. Yeah. So and it's so, probably not popular, but I like stock Android. And people say, what's the difference? There's a difference, man. There, and there is. Yeah. So I like pure Google. So if I could only choose, I'll choose Pixel. I was a Nexus guy. So I'll, I'll go with Pixel for that plus camera. Right, so right. Between the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Pixel, I'm good for any kind of mobile situation with camera, video, yeah. photo, anything. Okay, so so I mean, and and I love that you're really into uh, the whole camera experience because that's kind of what I am. You know, that's that's what kind of drives my priorities as well. Um, but when it comes to, I guess, right right now, if I were to ask you what what your favorite uh, camera phone is, do you could it, would you have one? answer right off the bat then is there one that you the answer think depends <laughs> <laughs> does it depend on the situation of what you're using so we're talking the... photo we're talking video we're talking uh, light, well right? okay, but okay yeah. still photo still photo pixel really so yeah still even, photo even, is pixel even at night Look, I, i've taken so besides just taking scenic shots and stuff you know sure. um when i use it for family like my niece and you know all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um i take home at least the iphone or the pixel and whatever android phone and I take a whole bunch of photos of, you know, when I'm there, 
And for her, my niece's first birthday party, right. my sister picked out all the pixel photos. She really? didn't know took it. I just sent her a bunch of photos. Hey, I took all these shots. Thought you might want some of them. And she printed out the, the ones that came out of the pixel and showcased it during the, you know, all over whatever her decorations for her sure. party. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's no, that, And that goes to show, I mean, especially in, in shots like that. And I just wonder if the, the, maybe the detail and the color just when it comes to people uh, just really stood out over, you know, what other phones are capable of, but that that's great. Well, what about, what about when it comes to video then? Do you do a lot of video work with your phones? Personally, you I personally I don't take a lot of video. I'll, I'll just do it for like just YouTube, right? Just testing the phones just out. For testing, I'll yeah. test the photos of the video. I'll use video occasionally. Like usually it's with family, right? So I'll, I'll take it a family, like my little nieces, cousins, all that stuff. But I won't just take video to take video um, every yeah. day. No, yeah. no, that, that iPhone. I, I would use iPhone. I mean, I think from a nerdy perspective and just you know, great video quality, 4K 60 from the front or the rear camera, fully stabilized, is impressive. <laughs> so, oh, that's and you don't and that's need 4K point. 60, but the fact that you can do it and it comes out almost perfect. You're right. I mean, of course, lighting matters, but then you've got the full sure. stabilization, so you're just holding it in your hand, and you think this thing would come out really ridiculously shaky, like a earthquake home. Right. Movie kind of thing. And it comes out real nice. Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. No, that that's awesome. I, and, and I appreciate you sharing that feedback because it's, you know, I I'm very, I'm very opinionated about how I feel about things, but it's always nice to hear, especially somebody who, who does a lot of the, the camera tests or just, you know, sees how it compares to other things. It's, it's always nice to get a different perspective there. Um, real quick though, I kind of want to go through chat because I know that, um, I know that, well, there's a super chat here. Uh, from Levin, Levin Williams for $2. I just upgraded my membership. Thank you, Levin. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, liking the stickers. Thanks, Levin. Appreciate you um, with the extra support always. Uh, let's see here. Um, Team Variety says, interesting that they're still keeping the notes separate from the fold. It's true too. Uh, Jay Williams. Hey, Jay Williams. What's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Nice to see you. Uh, appreciate you stopping by. Levin says, uh, Grant, you are my hero in owning all the phones. <laughs> Uh, so long, uh, says stock Android is boring and bland. And so like, I get that a lot. A lot of people, a lot of people feel that way. Um, and I don't, so then when, when people say that, then I also wonder what their choice of, um, I wonder what their choice of OS is. Cause, uh, I, I don't know, I guess for me, when it comes to stock Android, I just feel like it's a clean palette and then you can kind of just customize it the way you want. But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just there are certain things on other OSs that, um, you know, you'd prefer. I don't know. Well, how do you feel about that, Grant? When it comes to just so like when it when it comes to stock Android and it comes to like another kind of OS, what what brings you back to the stock experience? Uh, pretty much Pixel, man. I'm just saying it's just the Pixel itself and, and the camera, right? And that's that's why I go back to it. It's clean. It's not cluttered, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't know. A lot of people say pixels have been slowing down. It hasn't really been slowing down for me. I I, I guess I don't do a lot on my phone. I like, have not that either. I'm not using it. As, some people use it as their only device, right? They'll use it as their computer, everything, right? Right. And so I can see that, right? If you get like a Samsung, you have Dex. Um, it's powerful enough to do everything you want, right? But sure. You know, I yeah. am lucky to have you know different kind of tools for what I'm doing. So the laptop is great for certain things. Phone's great for certain things. So yeah, I won't, I won't use my phone for everything. But if you do, I can kind of see where. Someone who want more, right? You know what? That's actually a really good point because I, I'm, I'm like you. I always carry an iPhone, and then I always have an Android. And usually, well, now it's just the Pixel. But, uh, but that, that's a actually that's a really great point because maybe it's just I don't, I don't notice any kind of slowdowns because I'm always switching through phones, and so maybe I'm not noticing it as somebody who's using one specific phone for all of their needs. Um, okay, so let me see here. Uh, Javier, I'm fucking dying right now after removing one tooth, but I'm here supporting. Javier, welcome to the stream. Thank you for supporting. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, if you need to go get emergency, whatever, please don't don't stay here for this stream. <laughs> uh, Team Varai says, uh, personally, it's the minimalistic nature of the UI that attracts me. I'm the same way. And I, I feel like there's a, a good group of people that feel similar to that as well. Uh, Tectonic, it me. 
it is you tectonic what's going on welcome to the stream uh levin also says i'm a pure android then i can customize to my liking ios is good but it gets stale really quick yeah i mean at least for me as far as uh ios goes it's just the fact that i can't my one of my biggest gripes is just not being able to mess with the home screen to to have the same home screen all the time i don't like my icons that way i'd rather have a drawer for it um but yeah uh that's kind of how i feel about it so um Actually, you know what, Grant? Let's let's kind of go through. I just have a, a couple stories when it comes to deals, but we'll we'll go through that real quick, and I'll get your input on that as well. So, uh, really, uh, really quick, guys. What what I'll do here is I just want to talk about a couple of deals since you know we're talking about phones right now. We're always talking about phones, but uh, this article from Joy Life. I would just want you guys to take advantage because somebody yesterday was talking about the Pixel Three A, and uh, whether or not it would be good for. I think they were buying it for their kid, but uh, right now get a Pixel 3a XL for $319 before it's gone forever, $160 off. There's a good chance that retailers still selling the Pixel 3a and 3a XL are on their last batch of inventory. The 4a could show up any day and they'll wanna clear out stock to make room for the new model. So b &H Photo, it looks like right now the Pixel 3a, they're listing it as discontinued. At the moment, most Pixel 3a devices are back to full price after that sale, but B&H has the 3a XL in just black listed at 319 again. I think I actually pulled it up and it says more on the way, but I think you could still put it in your cart. So if you know, you're know you looking for a bigger version of the 3a, then you know you might get that uh, for 320 bucks. What is, uh, what is that current price on the 3a XL? Do you know, Grant? I don't even know what that current price like is. Like full retail from Google? Yeah, I have no idea. No. I'm not sure. Amazon's going for around almost 400, 380. Okay. I think so, we know oh, it's yeah. like 340. Well, it says, yeah, and it says here 160 off. So, right. uh, but yeah, and then uh, the, the other thing I wanted to share too, and even though I don't think we have a, uh, a shot at this, or maybe we do, um, is the Xiaomi Poco F2 Pro uh, landing in the UK with a gentler price tag at 499 euro. And then that's for uh, 5G, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of uh, internal storage. Uh, I think we know most of the specs on here, you know, it's their higher end version with a Snap 865. Um, still has a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, supports a 30 watt fast charging, 4,700 milliamp hour battery, has an IR blaster. I didn't know if I knew that or not. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a good deal too. Uh, and and actually I might as well ask you that then too, Grant. Have you have you had any of these Poco phones? Have you had the, the F1? Um, was that something that you, you put some money in and tested out? I tried the first one. You did. How yeah, how I mean, were your I mean, thoughts it, on it? It was great for what it was, right? It was like two or three hundred bucks. Yeah, three hundred dollars, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it was really good for what it was, right? And I mean, it's it's in Xiaomi's line, right? So like, um, all these phones are going to be pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. This F two, right? I mean, it's the K, that K thirty Pro, basically, right? Um, right. They put in the uh, LTE vans for global use, mm -hmm. and they price it about 500, which is kind of close. I think what the K30 pro was, it was around there, maybe 400. Um, so it's a decent price and it was one of the lowest for with a snap dragon 865, right? Mm -hmm. 855. So, but I don't know it, uh, for me personally, I think it's okay. Is it I mean, so a good the, value? Yeah. But I, I have a feeling the camera is just okay. I mean, Xiaomi puts in a pretty good camera, so I'm sure it'll be like more than good enough, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I kind of like to try to get the best camera I can. In the no. Phone. That that makes it's, sense. Maybe not for me, but I think it's definitely good value. But would you put this up against a OnePlus Seven Pro? Yeah, obvi obviously, obviously not. I'm guessing, especially if uh, so. So this is more of a phone where if the camera is not your top priority, right? This is probably something that would be better for somebody who might who would who would who would uh, prioritize like performance and maybe gaming or something over over the camera. I'm guessing. Um, so this isn't on your radar at all then, Grant? It was tempting. I mean, there was a deal out there. Someone was selling it for 400 bucks. and 400 I bucks? Like, I had to like everything in me to not to pull the trigger on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I got, I got too many phones. I'm gonna... <laughs> so, so uh, and actually, maybe you can help me out with this because you were talking about uh, the Redmi K30 Pro, right? Um, so if these two phones are similar, why, why, why have both? 
is that is that just because they want to like put Poco out here in the states? Uh, is it because they don't have the Redmi phone available for people in the U.S.? Is that is that why? I don't know if you're familiar or like mobile version, right? Okay. And po Poco spun out from under uh, Xiaomi, so they're mm -hmm. kind of like their own subsidiary, just like how Redmi spun out. Um, and so Poco needed a next phone. Yeah. And uh, okay. so they just took whatever was the most current in that price range from Xiaomi, mm -hmm. which is the K30 Pro. And the, you know, they just gave them the global version of it and labeled it F2 Pro. Makes sense. That, that makes uh, a lot of K3 sense. K3 Pro Zoom is what you would have wanted. Yeah. That's okay. That's one that had OIS uh, and supposedly oh. I've seen some footage uh, a lot makes a big difference in the camera. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm just looking in chat here. Uh, Jay Williams says, for some reason, I'm not impressed with the F2. There's nothing special about this F2. Good phone, not great. So yeah, it, it, I think it, it checks off a lot of boxes, I'm guessing, for people when it comes to what the specs are, right? Looks good on paper, but maybe the experience just isn't, you know, anything special. Um, I see Luke Van Bruggen. Hopefully I said uh, your name right, Luke. Luke, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the chat. I'm always impressed by Chinese flagship specs, but it comes down to software support at the end of the day. Just bought a 7T and I'll never go back to having to flash custom ROMs. Um, Wait, just bought a 17. I'll never go back to. Oh, you don't want to flash custom ROMs. Is that what you're saying, Luke? Uh, I, and and that's weird because I'm in this situation now where it's kind of like I. That's what I want to do. I maybe maybe just because I haven't done it in a bit and I just want to get. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to get my hands dirty again. But actually, that that's actually a, a good segue there too. Then Grant, um, do you have you have you done anything like that? Is that something that you kind of mess around with, like custom or? Uh, flashing custom ROMs or doing any kind of modding when it comes to phones? Is is that anything that interests you or? Mm, not so much these days. I used to do it a little bit. I mean, not heavily. Like if mm -hmm. I really wanted a feature, you know, back in the day, it's, it's kind of like jailbreaking your iPhone, right? Like if you really yep. wanted a feature and you couldn't wait, uh, you know, you'll just flash the ROM that has whatever you want, right? Um, so mm -hmm. I did a little bit. But now, you know, Android's matured so much that I just, that and I think I'm just, like I said, I'm getting older and lazy. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to do it anymore, but... Well, okay, so so if if it's not if it's not if like cust or if if flashing custom ROMs is really no longer a thing for you when you do have a phone. So let's say for example your Pixel, do you do you skin it at all? Do you use Nova at all? Or like do you use Nova if you're using a different phone that doesn't have stock OS? Is that something you mess around with at all or is that something that you don't really do anymore either? Uh Pixel no, I use Pixel stock launcher. Mm -hmm. Um other phones, I used to always use Nova. Right. Um, nowadays, I'm testing the phones. So I want to test their stock launchers, and I know I'll make myself use it for a period of time. And you know, if, if I just don't really like it, I'll change out to Nova or some other launcher um, that's just a little bit cleaner. But a lot of the launchers have been getting better, especially from you know a lot of these uh, Chinese-based companies. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're they're all just iPhone iOS clones uh, intentionally, mm -hmm. and now they're adopting more of the standard Android launcher features and so um, i'm not yeah. even on Xiaomi. poco has a nicer launcher too than the mi ui so really closer to stock they let you use i think poco launcher lets you use icon packs so oh that's yeah, yeah. that's a that's a huge plus there that's that's actually that's really um it, it's really interesting you say that because that's how uh it it has been for me so when tcl gave me that tcl 10 pro uh, the first thing I did was put a Nova launcher on it because I just got frustrated, but then, uh, I ended up taking it off and I just started using the stock launcher and I was like, it's not that bad. It really isn't, you know, you, you kind of get used to, you know, um, what it gives you. And it, it's still very reminiscent of kind of the stock experience you get with the pixel. I think the only thing that I have an issue with is that galaxy a 71 I have and, uh, the app drawer. Uh, not being able to just scroll from uh, down to up and getting all your apps and having to go from uh, right to left or whatever is, I don't know, if anything, that's the most frustrating thing. That's why for that, I would throw Nova Launcher on that because I just, I don't know why, I guess Samsung wants to be Samsung and they want to have, you know, their app drawer made that way because I guess it's just how they've been doing it for so long. So, yeah. yeah. Nova Launcher is a quick way to get everything set up though. Like if you get a bunch of phones, mm -hmm. you just save your setup and then just, load on the next phone right oh yeah that's right i i didn't even think about that that's actually a really good idea that's why i, I used to do it it's like if you get a bunch of phones and you don't want to go through the whole customizing your home screen and stuff you just load your config from your last nova 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um let me let me go back through chat here. Uh so um sorry guys. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go through everything, but uh yeah, software supports a mystery. There seems to be more bugs and security issues with software these days. Luke says, Yeah, it's not worth the hassle, honestly. Pretty fun as a hobby, but now I want a phone that works with no compromise. And I think there's a good amount of people who feel that way. See, I mean, there's the opposite end here, and Kyle is saying custom ROMs is the way to go. If you want long-term updates, go with Apple. Otherwise, use the gift of open software. The 9T is one of the few Xiaomi phones that will get uh MIUI 12 before the other devices. Um, I see Big House Productions in here as well. Big House, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. Hey, Jerome and Grant. What's up, Big House? Yeah, the hello stream. Uh, Big House, nice to have you, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Jay Williams says, Xiaomi always updates their phone. Software support is for sure there in my experience, but for me, software support isn't at the top of my list. Yeah, and and I think there's, a, there's always a debate to be had about software support. Um, I'm a big proponent of software support, especially when it comes to things like you know, my Pixel 4 getting Android 11, I, it's always nice to just have those updates come there, face unlock, whatever. But, you know, then there's always that other group of people that they don't even see that support's coming. But again, that's, we can leave that for a whole other day because that's, I feel like that is a topic that can get run to the ground. So I don't know, how how do you feel about that, Grant? Any Any thoughts? No, I've seen you talk about some of your other shows, so I, I know kind of where you stand. On it. <laughs> you can do probably a whole show on that. Yeah, I mean, I there's I see both sides to it, right? People are like, yeah, I don't need software support if I get other things, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, most people aren't even going to notice it. They don't care about updates, and I'm on the kind of side of the fence that yeah, that's all true, but most people don't explicitly care about the update. Like they're not going to run to their phone like, ooh, it's next, you know, the latest right. iOS just came out or sure. whatever else. But when it auto updates. Right and has some features that they like. If their friend has it, right, they have mm -hmm. it too, and they're like, "Oh, cool!" Right, they can start using it. Yeah. So they may not like the concept of an update, but they like probably the supportability, the longevity they get from it, and any of the cool new features that they get from it. So, sure, they get yeah, they I, like the outcome from it, right? It's not like they're gonna like, "Oh, I need the latest update." Exactly. It 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 has its place, even though it might not be something that like your like that a a, a consumer is actively consciously thinking about. But when it comes, oh. it's like, oh, awesome, awesome. So, although I think software has come a long way too, because before it used to be like, well, is this going to break my phone? <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's also very true. That's that's actually a really good point. That's a good point. Um, so let me see here. I see Sergio Coretto. Sergio, welcome to the stream, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Almost pulled the trigger on a used Galaxy S10 for three hundred and eighty bucks. I don't. Um, I'm assuming that's a good deal. I I haven't I haven't been up to date with uh with a lot of that, but 380 sounds like a really good deal for uh, an S10. Um, I've never owned an S10. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, you can uh, get a. You can either get the S10 or an A71 for that, right? So. Oh yeah, that's oh that's actually that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. Um, okay, so um, I kind of wanted to. God, I had a segue, and now I'm forgetting what segue I wanted to talk about here. Um, my you man, know what? Let's throw you off today. <laughs> no, no, you're <laughs> fine. It's good. I I appreciate I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate that uh, we can have a conversation, and it's also a good way to kind of learn about um, you know how another you know tech YouTuber has their experience when it comes to phones and like what their favorites are. Um, <laughs> Grant with his star Grant, I, you, you probably heard me say I've never watched Star Wars. I. Yep. <laughs> It's, it's we can't be friends <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry we could be tech friends no. but uh but yeah uh no you know what let's kind of move on to i have another story here and it's it's just we'll just use it as a segue as i kind of think of like where i was going to go with this but uh there is a story here and uh it's not the best of stories but it looks like apple is reclosing some of the u.s resale stores in states where coronavirus cases have spiked um and i'm not going to take too much time to go into this. We'll just kind of quickly brush over it. Not that it's not a serious thing. I'm not saying it like brush over in that way, but uh, I, I wanted to bring it up because, you know, it is an issue. And so Apple will reclose some stores in states such as Arizona, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. Uh, so, such states have seen upward trends in COVID-19 cases. Apple said back in May when it began reopening stores that it would reclose stores if necessary, depending on how the situation develops. develops. Uh, so they're going to reclose 11 stores in the U.S. Uh, because those specific stores where they're located at those states have seen an uptick in cases and i was saying earlier on the stream it's kind of unfortunate because yesterday apparently we hit uh the most cases 
I guess since we've been tracking coronavirus, I think Thursday we hit a record high of 150,000 cases. Uh, and most of them they're saying are in like the Americas. So North America, uh, South, like Brazil, I think I looked at Brazil and they had like 26,000 new cases or whatever. Um, and and so it says here these states are seeing upward trends in new cases of COVID nineteen. Uh, you know the increase comes as as stay at home orders have relaxed across the country. Uh, and then due to conditions of the communities we serve, we are temporarily closing stores in these areas. So I think they had listed the states, maybe not. I know they did. So, oh yeah, it's right here. So two two in Florida, two in North Carolina, one in South Carolina, and six in Arizona. Um, I don't, sorry, wrong screen. There we go. Uh, you know, let me, let me ask you, Grant, how, how has that affected, you know, um, I, you know, I don't even know what you do for work. I have no idea, but, uh, the, has it affected you in, in, um, like the work you do or you, do you, do you have you been working remotely from home anyway, or how, how's that? Yeah. Happened? I mean, yeah. I work in, uh, I work for a large enterprise here in mm -hmm. San Jose, Silicon Valley. So, you know, a lot of the work that I do for the company like we could always do remote pretty much anyway. It was just nice to go into the office. It's easier to uh, do face-to-face -face stuff, right? But uh, we've always had the tools to work from home. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, some people work from home once or twice a week anyway. And so when we transitioned to this, the only thing we had to get used to was doing it every day, right? Yeah. And if you have family or whatever else, getting used to that. But as far as working remotely, it wasn't a big deal. We have, we've always kind of had the tools. My job, I can do it, no problem. Well, there you so, go. You know, just tough on people who can't do their job at home. Um, are no longer have one because of that, but I, I think I'm, I'm very fortunate in that way. Oh, that's, that's great. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a tough time for everybody. Uh, it's good that it hasn't affected you in, in that kind of way. It's, it's unfortunate though, to, to see the, that uprise, um, or up, uptick in cases. And, uh, I, I always wondered why people would need to go to the Apple store right now, but I'm assuming there's probably a good amount of people too that like, well, for me, for example, my, my, I still need to bring these in, but my AirPods pros, uh, the left AirPod, um, it messed up on me. So like, I, I think it could just be as easy as just calling support and getting them to give me a return label or something. I don't have you have, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know how that works at the Apple store. Cause I've never had to go in there to actually ever return anything. Um, but I don't know what they're I'll, I'll just call support. Yeah. Like if you're still within the warranty, just call them. They'll probably just send you a new one. Yeah. That at would least the great. one bud probably. You know? Yeah. 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 Okay, These replace yeah. the whole thing. Now they might just be doing the one, bud. I don't know, but yeah, my original AirPods died right after the warranty ran out. So. Oh really? So are you are you using are you using AirPods now? Oh yeah, you are. I just noticed. <laughs> I was gonna say, is that is that your go-to? Is that uh, when when it comes to um, like listening to something or whatever? Do you use? Have you more for phone calls? Pixel Buds? Uh, yeah, uh, Pixel Buds <laughs> in the other room. Yeah, <laughs> you, you have everything, Grant. I'm these so are good jealous. for phone calls because you know I'm one of the few people that this design fits my ear and it's comfortable. Yeah, so I can wear it for a long period of time and it's not in ear. Right. That's so true. it does, it's more comfortable and it doesn't plug up your whole ear canal. So you can still hear things around you. Right. So it's good for office use. It's good for phone calls. So, okay. So, yeah. uh, when you use, uh, what, what, since we're talking about it, how do you feel about the pixel buds? Um, I, I think, yeah, that's pixel right. Buds are good for what they are. I think <laughs> you know? good for, that doesn't, no, I mean, when, you, when you think about it, right. Google kind of tried to make, you know, their own kind of sort of AirPod and more, com probably more competition for the, uh, Galaxy Buds, right? Because they're more in-ear style, mm -hmm. but you know they're made to work with Google products and, sure. and Android in general. Because you flip that lid open, and on any Android that has Bluetooth turned on, you'll see a notification come down and says, "Hey, do you want a pair of Pixel Buds?" Yeah, you just hit that; it pairs up. And then if you want to, you can download the app for more functionality. But uh, it works just like how the AirPods will, right? But it works across all Android phones. No, that that's so, a really good point. I, I think depending on the Android version, obviously, but yeah, that's a really good point. Let me, let me ask you then, what about, what about galaxy, the galaxy buds? Do you have those two? I just feel I like have the bud plus I never bother getting the plus, but okay. uh, I got the original ones and Dude. I think for what they are they're again, they're pretty good, right? Like I wouldn't pay that much money for them, mm -hmm. but like if they're chipping it in with the phone for free or you can get a nice discount from Samsung on them because they're trying to get up you know, nice discounts and they're giving them away if you bought the phone because they want as many of them out there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I think they're a good companion to the phone. I think the sound quality isn't as bad as everyone makes it out to be. 
Mm -hmm. I think people are kind of, you know, sound quality is subjective and it depends on how it fits in your ear. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. But I think for the bud that it is, it's, it's good. It's small and compact, so it can fit in your pocket. Not like some of the Sony earbuds. Right. So that thing case is ginormous. I'll never take that around every day with me. I didn't even so, you know, as an AirPod competitor, right, something compact you can take around with you, uh, just pop in your ear. It'll, you know, good connection, that kind of thing. Good enough phone quality, uh, good enough audio quality. You know, Galaxy Buds, Pixel Buds will do. They're, they're pretty good. No, you just don't expect like incredible sound quality, right? They're meant yeah. to be more of an all around kind of an earbud. Right, which I mean, it has its place. So no, I totally, I totally agree with you. That's that's a good way to to bring that up. Um, I see Mootster with the twenty dollars super chat. Holy shit, uh, Mootster, thank you so much, man. Happy Friday, keep up the good work, Mootster. Thank you. Uh, I don't Mootster's always when I I don't Mootster doesn't always drop by here, but I know he he watches my streams or watches the replays. But every time he does, he always drops like a crazy super chat. Mootster, thank you so much. Uh, I will try to keep up the good work. Um, it's uh it's crazy because like and and you know like I don't want to sit here and talk about money, but I I don't. I mean, like, like Grant, I see you posting videos regularly, and that's great. But for some reason, YouTube hates me right now because like. In the last three weeks, I think I have three streams that are monetized out of my um my live streams. They they well, have live streams are tough, man. YouTube, yeah, I, I guess they despite are. Despite them saying they want you to live stream more, mm -hmm. it seems like I'm not a YouTube guru or anything, but I just hear from other people that live streams kills your channel. So yeah, people so, unlist them on purpose. Yeah, and, and so they'll put them in their community tab or something for people to access. But mm -hmm. if you list them and keep them up, YouTube seems to penalize you. That's crazy. And, in and, this and day and age, they're really picky about anything that goes on the stream. And so it seems pretty easy to get a stream demonetized. Yeah. And so it seems like they they demonetize. And, you know, again, I'm very opinionated about how I feel about stuff. And I, you know, I'm not going to bend over backwards for it. And so that's why I'm just like, well, I might as well start streaming on multiple platforms if this is what they're going to do. And so, um, but anyway, they've been doing a lot of crap lately. So. Yeah. Anyway, Wootster, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, I will make sure to add you onto um well you know how it goes your your name's all over my intros and outros <laughs> anyway uh bad news brown gary is in here my people what's going on gary nice to see you appreciate you stopping by uh, i haven't seen you in a minute i will probably be seeing you tonight um just really quick a plug uh you know we do friday night tech talk and i don't know who's hosting it tonight i think it's george but uh we're doing that tonight i'm sure gary will be there with all of his uh quips and uh wit so uh <laughs> gary appreciate you stopping by um yeah, Levin is saying, believe me, it's no fun being an essential worker and having to venture out to go to work. And again, Levin, thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, doing what you do. Um, you know, it's I, I I feel lucky that I am able to do what I'm doing right now from home. I'm sure Grant feels the same way. So, uh, again, thank, thank you for what you do. Um, Forbes Tech Reviews. Oops, didn't mean that. What's up, Jerome and Grant S. Forbes Tech Reviews. Thank you, man. Uh, we're, we're doing well. Uh, appreciate you dropping by. What's up, Forbes? How's it going, yep. Joseph? Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's see here. Um, so Team Vry says, hey, guys, speaking of audio, what are your thoughts on the Soundcore Q10s and 20s? So this is beyond my realm. I haven't used it. Uh, Grant, I'm assuming, owns everything, so he knows. <laughs> no, I'm just I'll own everything. Because <laughs> like, I'm just giving you shit. Soundcore, um, I haven't gotten a lot of their stuff, but... Um, I've got the Liberty two pros, which are the earbuds oh, um, and they're like 150 bucks retail, but they always go on sale and those things are phenomenal. So if you're looking for true wireless earbuds that have awesome song quality mm -hmm. that are pretty close to the Sony WF 1000 XM threes or high end Sony earbuds, they're pretty close to the song quality there. So for 150 bucks, I would go for a sale. Those are great. The Q tens are the headphones. I think 30, 40 bucks. A uh, bit real bass heavy uh, from I've heard nothing but good things on the Q10s like for 30 bucks Like I hear they're just wow. amazing. Wow for 30 bucks. Yeah, I mean you, I mean temporary expectation, right? But I heard they're you know, if you like bass, you know, um, they got that bass boost on it, too And so uh, if I, I've heard nothing but good things about that one. Okay, um you know what? So we're kind of rounding out the hour here and uh, I I don't want to like take up all your time grant But I I want to touch on something just real quick uh, I don't know, say five, 10 minutes. Is that, is that good? Are you, I just don't want to like, good, man. I just don't want to monopolize your show. So no, you're not, monop <laughs> no, no, I, I, I like the conversation. As long as you want me here, I'm here, man. Oh, well, good to know. Good to know. I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, my um, day off. I got nothing else to do. 
<laughs> well, that makes me feel I got nothing else to do. So <laughs> not not like that, man. I'm, no, no, I'm, just I'm happy I got a chance to hop on here one time. <laughs> okay, so let me um and actually I'm just trying to pull this up here. So really quick. Um the the one thing I've been talking about, God, now I can't find where I I've been trying to sorry. I'm just trying to pull this up really quick. So the one thing that I have been talking about uh the last couple of days is the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. And um do it. <laughs> so pull the trigger, Jerome. Out. This is your conscience. <laughs> so so for for you guys that don't know, the Huawei P40 Pro Plus is what the highest end uh flagship phone from Huawei, right? That price is in at sixteen hundred dollars. Is that correct? I think it's more like fourteen fifteen, and it's a little bit more on eBay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, but you know, it's a trusted seller, and they'll ship locally from you know, I think Texas. Yeah. But then, unless you want to try it on some unknown website from China. So. And, and so, no, I probably wouldn't. And so what I was trying to do is I wanted to share this here because yesterday on uh, my, my discord uh, grant sent me this link um, for, and I just took a screenshot from eBay because if you see here, this is asking for 1600 bucks, but like grant said, it's from a trusted seller. Now I, I am a big advocate of not spending a, a ton of money on phones. You guys know this for, for you guys who watch me regularly. I always talk about that. Try to get the best value for your money. The reason that I, I am even considering this phone is because of the cameras, because I really want to like put it up against my iPhone 11 pro and my pixel four. And, uh, you know, Grant made a good point too, that says, well, Jerome, if you're just, if you really just want to test the main shooters, just get the P40 pro, right. Not the P40 pro plus, uh, because I think Grant was saying I would just be spending a thousand, just a thousand bucks instead of 1600. But I, I kind of really want to test it out because of how good the telephoto lens is on it as well and really give like a thorough review and you know do the camera thing that i do and uh it, it is a crazy price though and to to think i have been sitting here talking about um you know get the best that you can for your money i want this phone just because i really it's 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 uh i don't know if it's like uh i don't know if i want the punishment of not having google but for some reason, it's like not only not only are we going to charge you this much money for this phone, but you can't use any Google services on it. And part of me is like challenge accepted. Like let <laughs> let's go, let's do it. But um, I so so I should I should ask you then, Grant. Um, how do you feel about this phone? Maybe maybe not even the P40 Pro Plus, but just the P40 series in general. How do you feel about no Google services? Do you think that? So I think we all know if it's worth the money. And I think that answer usually leans on the no side, regardless of the cameras, but I kind of want to get your take. Um, I I'm sure you probably want me to get it anyway, because I'm sure you'd love to see a camera review or camera comparison on it, but uh, I kind of want to get your thoughts. So um, as far as the P40 series, how, what are your thoughts on it? Have you owned, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure that you've owned some of the past ones, or is this even a phone that you're looking at now? It is from a camera perspective, right? And so the P series from Huawei has always been their flagship for cameras and, and the bleeding edge on camera technology, right? Mm -hmm. That's where they put all the latest camera tech into that P series. And they've been working with Leica for the last few years. And from what I've seen, that's not just a you know marketing thing. They're yeah. you know really working with their engineering team and the results in the cameras kind of speak for themselves. Whenever the P kind of comes out, it's usually the if not the best right up there at the top of the list for at least photos videos have not been as good performing mm -hmm. but i would get the pro and not the plus because you can actually get the p40 pro it's been out a while so it's gotten prices come down a bit you can get it for 800 so half the price you can get it for 800 um, is it West the same color so is it the exact same specs internally except it just doesn't have the telephoto camera yep, just so you're, that. you're telling me right now that this is 1600 bucks because it just has that telephoto camera oh and it just came out and you can't get it here oh well okay, um, there's enough. no global or on it mm, it has global bands i don't think that's a global version but i mean it just came out right and so the only people that have them are people who got review units here mm -hmm. because you can't a lot of the um whatever the reseller uh channels here in the u.s haven't not many people have gotten their hands on them except for maybe this seller um, so uh, that's why it's so high and it retails out of the gate for like 14, 1500 anyway. Yeah. Um, so I would spend half that, get the P40 pro, 
um, because you're just not doing the Zoom. And I have a lot of thoughts because well, I like this to year hear all about, about seems to be all about camera Zoom, mm -hmm. and everybody gave Google crap for that last year. Right. And they said no, you don't want wide angle. We're going to focus on Zoom, and everyone just dumped on Google for that. And what's sure. everyone doing this year? Zoom. Yeah. Right? And so, um, but uh, I probably wouldn't use it that much in a day to day. I mean, it's cool to have, but from a practical standpoint, I wouldn't use it too much. Um, but Huawei Zoom has always been really good. Um, so, and the, I think the thing about this too, the P40, is that the wide angle cameras improved from what I hear. They've actually put similar camera tech into their wide angle. They're using a really good wide angle sensor, mm -hmm. ultra wide angle. And so that even performs well in low light. It'll like iPhone wide angle doesn't have night sight. Oh yeah. It's and not it's pretty bad. It's unusable. Right. Uh, yeah. And so this one supposedly does well in low light ultra wide. So I've seen some people post some videos on it and photos and the ultra wide seems pretty good on this thing too. So, so, so still it's going to be pretty good. So even for ultra wide, the P40 pro has that ultra wide as well. Is that what Same you're saying? Ultra wide sensor. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, really then the only difference then is that telephoto. That's interesting. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe you're changing my mind here. Grant. You can put Google services on it. There's a, if you ever get a P40 phone, I'll send you a link. Um, really? Gadget goddess. Who's another starting YouTuber, but she's been all about phone imports and Huawei phones and, uh, TK uh, from Total Tech. Yeah, um, uh -huh. they've been they've got the P40 and they've been able to put Google services. I gave that link out to somebody else who got a P40 Pro and he's, he says it works perfectly. The, up, the, the updates don't break it, so you can definitely do it. Oh, that's really cool. That's good to know. I um, I'll definitely have to take a look. I think there's still a part of me that wants to try to use one of these phones without Google services just to see if it's something that's even feasible. I I really don't think it will be, but um. I don't know. I uh, do. You, do you have any of these without um, Google services? Has, is there is there a Huawei phone that you you have used that doesn't have these services? Or no, you've are no. you just, do you just stay away from it? I I I could I could do it only because I have other phones, mm -hmm. but you know, I I don't think I could go long term. Yeah, you uh, you'd have to move out of all the Google services. There's other equivalents you could do it, but. It's just, yeah, really I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and that, that's, that's actually the, the, the million dollar question there. And I think most people would be like, no, that you're crazy. How could I not use? And like, again, I live in that ecosystem, you know, Gmail is just one of the many, but like, I think even for me, I use something like Google keep that I, I think I use so often that I forget that it's such uh, an essential app for me to uh, get through, you know, just my daily stuff. Um, I'm not sure what other equivalent services that you could get through the Huawei store. Have you even support. used? Yeah, I haven't so, even, I don't even know what that Huawei store looks like. I don't, like, I don't know if they support other services, you know, like if you were to move away from Google, you could do like Microsoft equivalent of the services or something else. Right. But is that going to be supported through Huawei's platform? I'm not really sure. No, that's in, that's, that. that's a fair point. And that really is a fair point. So, um, yeah. Okay, guys. Well, I, I think I think that kind of wraps it up here for today, especially for Friday. Um, you know, really quick, I do want to thank uh, Grant for stopping by and uh, engaging and um, being part of the stream. Uh, it's really nice to have you, man. It's, it's always nice to be able to talk to somebody um, who has a, you know, pretty much a fresh perspective on what tech is going on, especially somebody who has, um, ha has used a good amount of product uh, and, you know, is able to share their opinions. So Grant, thank you so much for stopping by, man. Um, it's, it's really nice to have you. Uh, yeah, no problem. Appreciate yeah. uh, you letting me jump on, man. It's been fun. Yeah, no, I mean, um, you know, we should do it again. Uh, and and I need to I need to kind of, maybe, maybe it's something I'll start doing on Fridays, maybe not every Friday, but like whenever I can find somebody to, that wants to be a guest and kind of like chat and, you know, have a conversation. Um, but yeah, uh, really quick guys, feel free to, um, I, I put his links in the description. So if you guys are not sub to Grant or you, you know, you want to check his stuff out, I put all of his social media um, things on there. Well, the main social media stuff. I don't know what Grant's doing on TikTok right now, but uh, I'm just, I'm kidding. I don't know if you have a TikTok or not. Um, no, <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs>
Um, I hear you're supposed to though, but yeah, apparently you're supposed to, you know, if you want to, if you want to garner the audience of, uh, you know, Gen Z, that's, that's usually the way to go. I mean, uh, you know, for most people now, um, I feel like a lot of people are starting to use that anyway. I don't but, think people uh, click on my stuff on TikTok. <laughs> I can't produce that kind of content. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I could either. I could try, I but no one would click on it. I did see right through it. <laughs> I feel yeah. the same way. I feel the same way. Um, so, okay, uh, really uh, quick, guys, before I end it, again, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. If you haven't had a chance, uh, feel free to um, click that like button. Liking the stream helps in an algorithmic kind of way, aka I think it helps people find the stream, find the chat, whatever. Uh, and uh, if you guys are not a subscriber, you know, I stream Mondays through Fridays uh, at 2 p.m. Central. So uh, subscribe. And I'm not going to go through the whole uh, join thing right now because I just I already have the outro pulled up. But, uh, you know, there I do have a membership. So if you guys are interested, um, you can click that blue join button if you can find it. Otherwise, you can go to YouTube.com forward slash phone Jerome forward slash join. And uh, that's it. Again, I want to thank Grant so much um, for joining. Again, you know, you should stop by and uh, we can do it again. I don't know if you had any final parting words. Um, are you good? No. Just <laughs> let me know if you get that P40 Pro, man. I'll let you <laughs> know. I'll let you know. The stream membership has its privileges, so do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Grant Grant is a member and uh, he's part of my very quiet Discord at the moment, but hopefully that'll change in the future. Um, but, uh, yeah, with that being said, um, tonight also I am doing, well, I, I should be doing Friday night tech talk. Um, and will, will be there. George will be there. Mike will be there. And, um, Ted will be there as well. Sorry. I was trying to remember everyone. Um, okay. I think that's it guys. Uh, I will be back on Monday, 2 PM central. Look for me then have a good one guys. Uh, here comes the outro. See you later.